Rar and stuff, everyone, and welcome to the beginning of what I'm probably going to regret doing. We're going to go through all of the Quest for Glory games. I have a bit of history with this series. It's uh, the second computer game that I ever played. And we'll get more into that as we go through. And thankfully, one of my friends told me about this, Scum VM. And it's a way to play these old DOS games that works on modern systems. And the best part is, Streamlabs can capture it. So, software you're using produced through the efforts of many people, designers, artists, programmers, musicians, and lots of other hardworking folks. If you make copies of this software for any reason other than make a personal backup, you're not only breaking the law, but raising the cost of software for all legitimate users. Don't make illegal copies of this game. Oh yeah, by the way, you'll need the information contained in the printed documentations to successfully complete this game. In other words, it's not just the law, it's a good idea. This little bit of text is a dirty lie. The game does have a sort of copy protection built into it where they would ask you questions that can only be found in the manual. However, at least in the version that I bought, the Quest for Glory Anthology, it didn't really come with the original printed manuals except as just like files that you had to find. And so the answers to those questions, a little difficult to track down. We're going to don't hit introduction. All that is is a credits roll, and you can't skip it once it starts. So, wanted hero of the village of Spielberg. No experience necessary. That sounds like us. We got three classes to pick from fighter, magic user, and hide behind your cape. Now, the, if you want to be able to basically do everything, Thief is actually the best way to go. Because you can start with every skill as a Thief. The other two, you don't get that option. We're going with Magic User, and as you can see, we don't have any points in Parry, Stealth, Lockpicks, Throwing, or Climbing. We do have some points we can distribute, but... That's it. We can only learn th three skills. And we're going to just skip on stealth and lock picking. Because I never really think of thieves as much as heroes. Oh, we got five more points to spend. Um. Let's crank our magic a little tiny bit. The main character of this series actually does have a have a canonical name, and it's from a novelization, which I have never read. So I can't remember what his name actually is. And anytime I need a name for a hero-ish character, we throw down Valis. This seems like a quiet town. On the porch ahead, you, on the porch ahead of you, there are two people. The standing one is a large, rather ugly, and playing with a yo-yo. The seated person smoking a pipe looks like he might be the sheriff. The man with the pipe greets you. Welcome to our town. You're lucky to have made it down from the mountains before the snow blocked the pass again. It's gotten pretty dangerous outside town, I understand. 
Many monsters have been trapped around here with the late snow between them and the brigands. We certainly could use a hero around here. I am Sheriff Schultz Meisterson. This is Otto von Goon, my assistant. Good luck in your quest. We'll just throw down a save right now. And save. So this is a point-and-click adventure game. You have your different interactions. We can look at things. We can look at the sheriff. Schultz appears to be an affable old coot, content to smoke his pipe. There's a hardness behind his eyes, however, that gives you reason to believe he's no pushover. Hey, yeah, let's see if we can shake his hand. Unhand that sheriff! <laughs> and talk. Let's ask about the mountain. You should know you came from there. The town? This town was named after the Barons of Spielberg. It used to be a lively place. Used to be a lively place to be before the brigands came and drove all the business away. You can find a place to stay at the inn next door. You can learn about jobs available at the guild hall down the street. And if you're interested in magic, you should visit the magic shop. There's still plenty to do and see here in Spielberg. And that has opened up some new dialogue options. We can ask about the Baron. Baron Stefan keeps mostly to himself at the castle north of here. We haven't seen him in town for a few years. We can ask about magic. Just next to the end is a small magic shop. The owner, Zara, will let you in if, if you have some abilities in that area. She's a strange one, all right. The inn. Go talk to the innkeeper. He'll help you there. The Guild Hall. The Guild Hall is at the southeast corner of town. If you're looking for work, that's a good place to go. Something else. Moving down, monsters. The monsters come down from the mountains every winter, but they're usually gone by now. The Baron just doesn't have enough men to handle them. Wolfgang is the one to talk to about monsters. He's had a lot of experience with them. Who's Wolfgang? Wolfgang, down at the Guild Hall, is... The one to talk to about monsters. He's had a lot of experience with them. The Guild Hall. Yeah, it's just repeating that. Uh, the brigands. There's a whole band of brigands hiding out somewhere in the mountains around us. They robbed a merchant just last week. Got a fair amount of treasure, I hear. Uh, who's this merchant? The one who was robbed? He's staying at the inn, I believe. We've already asked about the inn. Let's tell us about treasure. Obtaining treasure involves putting yourself in danger. If you're brave, foolish, or lucky, you might get some treasure. Yeah, but we were asking about the treasure that was stolen. By fire and by blood, I join with thee in the order of the flames. Rar and stuff, Seru, thank you for the resub. 13 months. Let's ask about danger. My friend, this world is filled with dangers. Sometimes I think it might be better to choose your danger rather than sitting around waiting for it, as I seem to do. But enough of this philosophical rambling. I am content enough to be the Sheriff of Spielberg. Uh, adventure! You'll need to talk to the Baron about that. Or go ask Wolfgang down at the Guild Hall, which is just down the street. So maybe you're going to be a hero? Well, we could surely use one around here. Well, with all the brigands. And we've already asked about the Baron and Wolfgang. Who are you? I am Sheriff Schultz Meisterson. And this is Otto von Goon, my assistant. We cannot talk to the Goon. We get no response. And I think we've exhausted... Nope, we can ask about Otto. Otto's a big help to me. He's very smart for a Goon. His prisoners only suffer a few broken bones when he grabs them. It took a bit of doing to teach him to bring prisoners back alive, but he hardly ever forgets now. How goes it? It is hot down here. Gosh, that's an authentic whamma blamma three scoops of mana hilarious gregarious floats in the areas. Yo yo. It's more than a hint of ogre about this strange, bulky character. 
He seems cheerful, though. The sign reads, Hero's Tale Inn. The eye over the magic shop door seems to be watching you. You've come to the end of the main street. The town wall is to the south. You have an eerie feeling that someone is watching you. Let's check our monies. We have four gold and ten silver. She's the only sane person here. At least she's not off her rocker. <laughs> She is really sleeping soundly and doesn't seem to notice your presence. Zzz. <laughs> Some arse. Judging from what the sign says, this building at the end of the street is the guild hall. Hand. For melting in this weather. I want winter back. You know, as terrible as our winter storm was, once I just kind of locked myself up in my room with a space heater, it turned out to be okay. As long as I didn't have to go out uh, outside of my room for anything. This adventurer's guild hall reminds you of the one in your hometown. The traditional moose head and other stuffed monsters, Saurus, Troll, Griffin, and Dragon Abuse, Cheetar, and the terrible Antwerp adorn the walls. You see a registration book on the table and the bulletin board full of job listings. The man seated near the window must be the guildmaster. He is snoring. Let's look at the book. This entry was made several years ago. It says, Baronet Bernard von Spielberg killed a troll near the Flying Falls on this 23rd day of October. <laughs> Well, you sign your name into the adventurer's logbook with a flourish. This is certainly a weird one. You've never seen anything quite like it. The plaque reads, Antwerp, slain by two guys from Andromeda. The head is like a panther's, but with a strong human-like quality. It's still rather frightening. <laughs> My favorite season, October. The plaque reads, Cheetar, slain by Wolfgang Aben Aben Abentur. Dude, how do you say your last name? Can't wait till Quest for Glory 4 when we have a narrator. Even in death, this monster remains awesome. Hell yeah, dragons are awesome. The plaque reads, Dragon, slain by Baron Stefan von Spielberg. Looks like it must have been a particularly nasty troll. You wouldn't want to meet him in a dark forest. Black reads, Troll slain by Wolfgang... Wolfgang Abnasterter. <clears throat> this crossbreed of eagle and lion could have, could have torn a man apart when it was alive. Black reads, Griffin slain by Wolfgang Abnasterter. The plaque under the moose says, Courtesy of the Sierra Online Prop Department. You never saw a purple saurus before you came to Spielberg, but it looks like a really stupid monster. The plaque reads, Saurus, slain by Hans Halfwitten. A past adventurer's armor suit. You wonder why he doesn't need it anymore. Then you see the Cheetar claw marks. Fire blazing cheerily in the fireplace helps warm the guildmaster's old bones. It looks like this old guildmaster doesn't do too much adventuring anymore. Still, he looks like he was plenty tough in his day, and he probably has many a tale to tell. The guildmaster appears to be hard of hearing. Perhaps you should get closer. No, his eyes are totally open. He's blinking. I think he's just saying the word Z. A 
Ah, I was so busy I didn't notice you come in. Welcome, welcome. It's so seldom that we have new adventurers here. Most people think this valley's cursed. It was just yesterday that I drew my sword and started out. What was that day before? No, then last week? What was I talking about? I just want to ask you stuff. Okay, no more accents. This is where an adventurer can find out who needs some someone brave and courageous. There are many jobs on the bulletin board over there. It's also a good place to talk about adventures on a cold afternoon. We used to play cards here once a week as well. But there are too few adventurers in Spielberg anymore. They all died from monsters or brigands. Or they just got too old. Adventurers. Did I ever tell you about the time when Schultz and I rid this valley of Antwerps? Yeah, we were real adventurers then. And this was a real guild hall. Now we're just old men and this is a place to tell old stories. You can see some of the types of monsters that live around here if you look at our walls. There are trolls, griffins, spelled wrong, cheetars, mantrays, and goblins wandering the woods. I hear there are even some ogres and saurus rexes back in, the, in this valley. There was a time when Schultz and I had gotten rid of most of the monsters around here. We're too old for that now. We can ask about all of this. Trolls! They are very tough. Fortunately, they only come out at night. The woods are very dangerous at night. That is very true. You do, you do not want to be outside after dark. The Saurus. It's a monster easy to avoid and easy to kill for a skilled adventurer. We are not that yet, and they will kick our ass. Ogres are a lot like goons, but even meaner. Not as bright, though. Goblins are not tough, but when they gang up, they can take out an unwary adventurer. Cheetars are ferocious creatures that charge out of nowhere and try to tear you to shreds. Sometimes they succeed. Those weird things are magical. They're best avoided. I just asked about mantras. I don't remember ever actually seeing one in this game. And the Saurus Rex. Don't mistake those for Sauruses. When they come at you, it's sometimes best just to run away. Uh, bulletin board. Over on, the, over on the wall over there is where the jobs are posted for adventurers. Some have been there for a long time now. There just aren't too many good adventurers around here lately. You need to talk to either the Baron or the Healer about that. Okay, uh, Healer. Her house is just north of the town gate. She's a nice woman. And the castle? Castle is just north of the Healer's house. Trophies. Schultz and I killed most of the monsters on the walls. Tell me about that awesome dragon. One day, years ago, a pair of dragons tried to take over our valley. We adventurers rode out to meet them. I can still see Stefan, Stefan von Spielberg charging forward on his black horse. He slew that dragon whose head you see on the wall. What a jerk. And the other one flew off. I hear people see... I hear people see that other dragon flying high overhead sometimes, but has never dared to attack us again. It probably could win this time. The <laughs> Antwerp. This valley was overrun by those odd monsters one year. Schultz and I fought long and hard to rid the valley of the things. We might have failed even so, had it not been for those two peculiar tourists who came to our aid. Tourists? They called them... They said they were from some place called Andromeda. Must be someplace south of here, I guess. They certainly were odd. I feel like that's a reference to something and I just don't get it. Moose. That was the most vicious moose I ever saw. Nearly bit my nose off. Yeah, the one that was donated by the prop department. Now I remember the day we killed one. It was the biggest I had ever seen. It put up a tough fight, but I was tougher. You can see the results on the wall. Tell me about that Cheetar. Watch out for Cheetars. I bear the scars of my fight with the one on the wall to this day. Still, 
It's stuff, stuffed, and I'm alive. And the Saurus. I remember when Hans killed one there. It was a tough fight for him. Hans Halfwitten. He wasn't much of an adventurer, but he did manage to kill a Saurus before he made the mistake of tangling with a troll. And I think that's all this guy's got to say. Nope. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, what's your name? Wolfgang Abentiter. The Guildmaster. Guildmaster? I'm supposed to keep track of all the adventurers and make sure they sign their names in the log. There was a time when I would go out and rescue foolhardy adventurers who gotten into too much trouble, but I don't get out much now. Tell us about the curse. Love this game? I do too, but it's been a long time since I've played through it. Yeah, with the Baron losing his son and daughter, Baba Yaga and all the monsters now and the and now the brigands, it's just been one thing after another. Baron von Spielberg was once a brave protector of our valley. We used to engineer, we used to adventure together when I was younger. No brigand or monster would dare show his face here if the Baron had not angered Baba Yaga. Now it's said he goes nowhere and sees no one. The Baron's son. Now there was a hero and worthy of the name Bernard von Spielberg. He rode off to to hunt one morning five years ago, and his horse returned with a large with large claw marks on it. No sign of Bernard's body was ever found. Class am I playing? I am playing as a magic user. Let's ask about the daughter. Elsa was a beautiful eight-year-old child with blonde hair and sky blue eyes. She was her father, the Baron's joy. Ten years ago, she was carried off by something which flew over the wall and away with her. The search for her lasted many years, but at last, everyone gave up except the Baron's jester, Yorick. Yorick was a funny little man, but brave. He swore he would spend his life searching for the Baron's Elsa. Baba Yaga... <clears throat> She is the center of our problems, I think. Baba Yaga is a powerful ogre. Baron von Spielberg tried to force her to leave this valley, but she cursed him. And now the Baron has lost everything but his land. And I don't know how long he'll keep that. What our valley needs is a hero. Am I here? Do I exist? Apparently got put into watching a VOD? Twitch has only ever done that to me one time, Fruity. And it was, it was weird, because I was still, whenever I typed anything into chat, it would go towards the live stream, but I was watching a VOD. It was bizarre. <laughs> yeah, whenever I first started, I was explained that the Thief is actually probably the best class to start with, simply because you can... Start with every single skill. It was the start of the stream, but it was only 20 minutes long. That That is weird. Hey, tell us about the hero. Or a hero. A real hero is someone who didn't start out strong or powerful, but uses his courage and brains and skills to become the best he can be. Uh, brigands. There is a reward for anyone who can stop the brigands by capturing or killing the leaders of the brigands. You should read the bulletin board for more information. Bangleby, thank you for the follow. Hope to see you here for the playthrough of this entire series, because I'm not stopping at one. Uh, tell me about the town. Spielberg Town is a small is small now that most of the people have been driven off by the brigands. This is such a pretty place, too. The mountains and the forests and the waterfalls and the VGA graphics. The title of this game sounds like an isekai. What, the So You Want to Be a Hero? Or just the Quest for Glory part? I think the game was originally called Hero's Quest, or maybe just Hero Quest, but somebody else owned the rights to that name, so they had to change it. 
The mountains surrounding this valley are very high. Snow covers the tops of it all year long. The only way out of Spielberg Valley is through the pass, though I hear that's blocked by snow again. The forests are full of monsters and strange creatures. There are some nice waterfalls to the southeast of town. They fill Mirror Lake, which is lovely, but icy cold all year round. Waterfalls? Yeah, I just asked about that. Wait. So, if you ask him about forests, then he tells you this one line, and then goes on about the waterfalls that fill Mirror Lake, and you can ask him about the waterfalls, and he just says the same thing about it again. This town used to be a thriving city before the brigands drove most of the people off. The, so you want to be a hero? One of those kind of long, catchy phrases. I think it's just because this series is one that does not take itself seriously at any point. I'm going to be saving a lot, and I don't know why. Farmer's Market. The Farmer's Mart is run by the centaurs. Heinrich Ferdefurdefurdefurdefurdefurdefurdefurdefurdefurdefurdefurdefurdefurdefurdefurdefurdefurdefurdefurdefurdefurdefurdefurdefurdefurdefurdefurdefurdefurdefurdefurdefurd
We have some land to the north of town. It isn't very big, but we grow many things. You should be here during harvest time. Then you would see many fruits and vegetables. My mother's been dead for three years now. I still miss her. You want to go on a date? Thank you, but my father thinks I'm too young. He would not permit it. But perhaps next year... <laughs> Is that it? Okay. Market. This is where I sell things for my father's farm. Eh, same stuff. Vegetables. We have many kinds of fresh vegetables for sale. There are carrots, rutabagas, parsnips, potatoes, right from the ground. It had five for, five for a silver. They're very good for you. We also have some apples. Apples. There's still some apples left from last from last season in the barrel. You may buy ten for a silver since they're so small. Carrots are my favorite vegetable. They are so crisp and sweet. Rutabagas keep well over the winter months. That's all she has to say about them. They're not good. They're just, well, they don't go bad. Parsnips. Parsnips can be made into a tasty pie. And turnips. Turnips are good if you cook them in, a, in stews. And brigands. They've twice robbed my father of his money, and they have tried to steal our food during this winter. That's because we farm outside of town. The brigands would not dare try that in town. The sheriff would stop them fast. Robbery. Many robbers ran up to my father as he trotted back to town. My father tried to fight, but they hurt him badly. They then ran away to the southwest. So that gives us an idea of where the brigands are based. Somewhere to the southwest of here. Sheriff. Our sheriff is very brave. He told me so himself. <laughs> Alright, that's all we we can do with her. If we wanted to buy something, we would actually have to select our money pouch and click on her with it. But we're not quite to that point yet. The shop seems to be closed, although there are some dried up cupcakes in the window. There is a sign on the door which says, Gone Fishing. The shop seems to be closed. There is a sign on the door which says, Gone Fishing. A butcher shop and a bakery. So both the butcher and the baker have gone fishing. The grimy window lets little light into this tavern. It smells like stale ale and other more unpleasant things. The floor is covered with dirt and the bar sticky with beer. Smoke appears to be rising from the center cask behind the bar. To your right, two gamblers are playing cards. The bartender glares at you as you enter, and so does the ugly goon on the left. You get the impression that you are not welcome. Safe. The bartender's ignoring you. Maybe you'd better sit down first. What do you want? You get no response. Let's try that. See, not. Okay. This is a bar. I serve drinks. You want a drink? Order one. You want answers to stupid questions? Get out. Ale, one silver. Troll sweat, five silver. Dragon's breath, twenty-five silver. Take your pick. Uh, ale, good for what ails you, har har. Troll sweat, it'll go down real smooth. Dragon's breath, it's the house specialty. Uh, town? What do you think I am, a guide dog or something? Why would a guide dog tell you about a town? Should've been like tour guide. Tavern. It's the Aces and Eights Tavern, stranger. And Crusher. You don't like his personal affairs discussed. My advice is not do anything that'll get him upset. All right, well, let's get something to drink. 
Obviously, knowing me, I gotta go with the Dragon's Breath. If you want a mug of Dragon's Breath, house rules say it'll have to be cash up front. You cough up the cash. Thanks, buddy. Hey, Crusher, our friend here wants Dragon's Breath. There you go. You've never tasted anything like it before. Oh, wow. And we're dead. Maybe you really shouldn't have tried the Dragon's Breath. Better luck next time, and we hope you saved your game.